Up to the the first three Bruce Sting- Springsteen records, he's sort of finding his voice, right? And then this record, he's finding our voice. Yeah, and, that's and it happens like way boom, way like overnight. Yeah. You, know? you didn't even write any notes and come up with that. <laughs> I wrote all this crap down. Here you are trumping me. I like it, man. <laughs> I was thinking about it anyway. So, that's a yeah. really good point. You know, I li- I'm I was born in '79. I was born after this album was made. But uh, why you got to rub that in? Because <laughs> because there are there's a certain demographic that I reach. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, but here's the weird thing. I wasn't even a big Springsteen fan growing right. up, ever. And it wasn't until I saw this movie like three weeks ago that this that I fell head over heels in love with this album. And, and what, like, you, the, what you're talking about the, is the, the documentary the it's on that's HBO. In, right, The Making of the Promise. The Making of the Promise. It's on and HBO. It's so inspiring, dude. And the shit that he says in there, I mean, there's just lines where he's talking about him as an artist. And me, I'm 31. He was 27, 28 years old when he was doing this. And, and like, I'm in a very similar place in my life where where I'm coming into like the adult issues in life you know like that and and, and it's like he <laughs> really insurance and I'm always a little behind anyway but yeah but I mean like to him that's where he was man you know he was trying to figure that out I think and it says in the show in the in the in the, the special he talks about I didn't care uh you know in in born to run he was running away from everything and then like all of a sudden he's got to face this reality he's got to face his relationship with his father he's got to you know and he and the fact that he cut 60 songs to get these 10 to have that voice I mean when you listen to the promise you can see it's like those ones are great songs but they what he got on the original record here of darkness on the edge of town it's like unbelievably like you said dude it's like america man i mean for me i didn't relate to born to, born to run and i didn't you know i didn't grow up in 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 as much right. of like a like po- it's almost like pre-apocalyptic city like of like jungle land and things like that but like this album adam raised a cane from that to just the song darkness man the, the evolution of, of racing in the streets you know the, oh, the, the equipment and the car changes yeah you know? yeah, yeah the you, you see some and i had some inkling of that just because i knew gary talent and you know before i knew anybody else in the band anybody else around bruce and i you know he'd turn up at our shows in philly when we first started touring in the mid 80s and i'd interrogate him every chance that i got <laughs> I I well, my earliest genius. memory of bruce springsteen is i was a little girl when mtv came on the air and in between like thriller and mark knopfler was glory days yeah <laughs> and and it was such a bizarre random beautiful thing in many ways but i can remember that my mama would come in when that video came on and i can picture clear as day she'd have a dish towel and a cake pan and she'd be drying out a cake pan and she'd say now i like him <laughs> i like him and that says it all i mean she was a hillbilly singer from charleston west virginia and she, he had a narrative and a, an approachable vibe about him that was able to you know to reach my mama yeah and i there is there's obviously a great power in that yeah there's i mean i think i i saw um you know that would be the born in the usa tour which i saw that tour in in murfreesboro at mtsu and i'll never forget that night was a big big revelation for me I, i i had just started writing the songs that would become guitar town and bob orman and i went to the show and it dawned on me i'm a 22,000 seat arena and i'd seen like i said every tour except for darkness up right. to that point but suddenly he had refined himself as a performer down to the point was i watched him turn a 22,000 seat arena into a coffee house i thought that when i put down the acoustic guitar and started fronting the band that something had to change in the way that i was performing but what i saw was those performances, they were huge and they were epic, and that's the way people remember them. But what made them click is, is how intimate they were. It was this almost like one-on-one relationship with the audience, and that was that was huge. It was a huge for me yeah. as a performer. Yeah, you know, and, and like I said, you know, the the, dark, the 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 characters on Darkness. I mean, they they they're, they're, they're so real. They're such. It's, it's as if you know, as if Bruce was talking to me. Yeah. You know, like what just what like you said. I didn't feel like, oh, Bruce is making this big, you know, trying to sell out. Uh, Bruce is not selling out. I'm buying in. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, he's talking directly to me.